Again, we're back to the issue of whether net migration needs to urgently be brought down. The fact is, look, there is a lot of uncertainty in this room. There's a lot of uncertainty in the country, and I get it. Like, part of me really does want an answer soon. I'd like to know what my future is going to look like, what my friends' futures are going to look like, my friends from the EU who are living here. I would like to know what's going to happen. Everyone would. But Brexit was a giant, giant shock. Almost nobody in, you know, in government was really expecting it, and there was no plan beforehand. The people on the, on, on the Brexit side really were not honest with the British people about what we were going to get. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? And democracy is, is a process. Look, I, I understand people have really strong feelings on either side, and I do too, right? But democracy is not just about one side beats up the other and then one side has to lie down and the other person gets everyone. This was a narrow victory, 48% to 52. But, but Laura, may, may I finish? No, Please, well, may well, I finish? Uh, what well, that means yes, is we need stick compromise. stick to the point that he was I'm, making. I'm really, really glad someone brought this up because I'm really shocked at the tone of this debate and how we're talking about immigrants as if somehow they're not real people. The people who came over after the war, my family were part of that wave of people. I'm proud to be British and part of the European community, part of you know, a giant society of people trying to work to make each other's countries better. I think you know, we seem to have forgotten that Britain is also supposed, I hope, to be a compassionate nation, a humane nation. That is the Britain I'm proud of, and I want that country back. People were saying they want their country back. I want the tolerant, compassionate Britain back, and I'm worried that we're losing it. Okay. Your yes, idea, I think, is, is one of them. Just, just let's have your question and see whether you strike a chord with everybody here. We knew what we voted for in leaving the EU. Why are Remainers making out constantly that we are uneducated people that didn't understand Brexit and what we were doing? Yeah. I knew. Thank you. <laughs> And obviously that's, that's what you feel. Yes. You feel it I of, feel... Do you feel it of Ruth Davidson? I, I actually felt it... No, I don't, actually. Thank you. <laughs> um, I felt it more from Tim Farron last week, yes. actually. Yes. Um, I, I was sort of shouting at the TV. We, we, I, I'm not an uneducated person. Um, I'm sure a lot of the people who voted to leave, we, we knew, I read everything, I looked into everything. It's how I felt, and I did the old-fashioned pros and cons in writing, and I wanted to leave. And, but people now are making out as if we're uneducated, mm -hmm. as if we don't know what we were doing. And it, I just think they need to stop doing that. Anybody yeah. else who feels that, incidentally, throwing things at the television or shouting at it is an occupational <laughs> hazard of watching Question Time. You, sir, the man behind, do you agree with her? I do indeed. Can I take exception, firstly, in the implication from Laurie that it was a close-run thing? Had it been a general election, it would have been called a landslide. So it can wasn't we a general that, election. Can we put that one to bed? We can all see that there is a storm brewing in Europe. And it's, it's time any sensible skipper would head for home. Yes. We need to get out now. We need to shake the dice, see where they land, but we need to shake the dice and we need to be in control of it. All right. I'll take a couple of points, now you might go on. You sit there. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people. I find it absolutely abhorrent that people like you come on the end and call that the British people, we, we lack compassion. You're essentially calling us fascist and racist just because we have concerns about immigration. I'm a primary school teacher and I've worked at various schools Nobody where... Nobody I, yes, but unfortunately that's exactly the tone that we're taking. I've worked at various schools where English is genuinely not the first language on the playground. Not between the children, but by the parents. Quite often, you go around, because once upon a time people came to this country and gradually integrated and were welcomed. We're a very welcoming nation. But when you get a massive influx of people all coming at the same time, that's what people have a problem with. That's when we get concerned when we go to the doctors and we can't get appointments. You go down to A&E and it's full. Now, maybe people may turn around and say, no, 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 that's racist, that's fascist, that's not acceptable. But 18 million people, just like that lady says down there, we knew what we were voting for, we know what we want to get out, and the sooner we start in Trigger Article 50, the better. All right.
Laurie, keep it short, we must yeah. move on. All right, to try and answer both of your questions. Look, firstly, I don't believe that people who voted Brexit are stupid. I think, unfortunately, some people may have been lied to and manipulated, and that is not <laughs> the fault. If, if you let me finish, if you let me finish, I'd like to ask you, sir, what is... I, under, I understand, I understand that it hurts to hear people saying that's racist, that's xenophobic, but um, do you know what also hurts is to be a victim of racism, to be a victim of anti-immigration. Let me put it to you, let me put it to you. In Wakefield here, 95% of the people of Wakefield were born in the UK. This is not a town which is experiencing a giant migration crisis. And I want to know, I want to know, I want to know from you, sir, I'd like to know, I'd like to know what it is about listening to people speak a different language in the playground that makes you uncomfortable and how you think that connects to the fact that you can't get a doctor's appointment because the NHS is a funding crisis. All right. There's nothing to do with that. All right, Laurie, you Laurie, you Laurie, you've made your point. Let him answer, and then I'll come to you, and then I'll come to you, Tim. Yes. OK. Uh, the main Richard. problem, uh, to be honest with you, there's various different accents, there's various different languages that we hear. But what you do, what you do fire is it, it find is that it fires up different parents, and all of a sudden the parents are complaining, and then the children, who weren't aware, really, of where different children came from, all of a sudden are becoming quite divisive, because the parents are becoming... Now, as I say, once upon a time, people came to this country. It was a fa it's a fantastic country. We welcome people. We integrate with people. But unfortunately, when people come en masse, they don't necessarily want to integrate with everybody else because okay. they've got their own little communities, and that's what we're finding in school playgrounds. All right.